Welcome back to Melody Loves Death Metal. Happy Monday. I am finally going to talk about this album today. The new Opeth album, The Last Will and Testament. Uh, this has actually been one that people have messaged me about several times since it came out. And, you know, several people also got the promo and had heard it and then were messaging me about it. Because uh, you guys know I'm a huge Opeth fan. Um, I absolutely love Prague. Um, and I'm always been a fan of their more progier albums. Um, now I don't necessarily listen to them as much as I probably should. And I often don't pick them over, you know, some of their earlier albums that are my absolute favorite. Um, but it has been what, five years since their last release. And I didn't have a YouTube channel back then. So and I didn't do any reviews or anything like that back then, so I haven't really fully talked too much about Opeth on this channel for that reason. Um, I've never done like a ranking or anything, which I feel like probably should, um, because I'm pretty, I know every single one of their albums. I own quite a few of their albums now, um, but they're pricey to get on vinyl. So yeah, so we have this album out. I'm trying to figure out, I can't remember when it came out. Was it like literally November 22nd? Yeah, it came out November 22nd, so it's been out for a couple of weeks now. Um, I listened to the promo of it about two days before it came out because admittedly I just never got around to it. I wasn't sure if I was in the mood to listen to it, True, you know, to be frank here because I wasn't sure if that we were getting, you know, uh, Prague Opeth or if we were getting something different at this time around. I will admit um, from Pale Communion, Sorceress, and then Inakauda, Venom, I can never say that, I can never say that. Um, we got pretty much more or less of the same style of Opeth music within those albums. So I was kind of just under the impression that that's how this one would be. It would just be kind of a spinoff of, of their last album that came out in a, in a cow of whatever, I can never say it, from 2019. And just can't continue on that front. And then as people started listening to it, they, they were messaging me like, oh, the growls are back and it's all Opeth and it's, it, you gotta, you gotta listen to it. You're going to freak out. Uh, it's the best one since Ghost Reveries, and, and that, for me, was a a statement there because Ghost Reveries is one of my favorite Opeth albums. Um, so I was like, okay, so I finally listened to it, and then immediately I didn't have it on pre-order. The price around it was a little bit mm, annoying. Um, the price point on this was not that that great, but after my first listen, then I, then I got it. <laughs> um, it was 40 bucks plus, like however much for shipping. So I think it came close to $45 to get this. Um, it's on Raining Phoenix uh, Music. And I think, is this their first album on a different label? Because uh, the last one was on Nuclear Blast, yeah. So first album on a new label. So this is their 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Holy album. I should have known that. I thought it was going to be 13. I was one off. Um, so just a little bit of a background on my Opeth journey here. The first album I ever heard was Blackwater Park. That has always been my favorite Opeth album to this day. Um, and then I went back and listened to Still Life, My Arms Are Hearse, Morning Rise, and Orchid. And I would say that pretty much is pretty much in line of like ranking of what my favorite albums are. However, I'm a huge fan of Deliverance and Damnation, Ghost Reveries, and I really did like Watershed too. Um, and, and I think from there... That's kind of where, like, from Watershed back to Orchid were the ones that I just listened to all the time. Heritage and Pale Comedian and Sorceress and Inakata, Venom, Venom, I can never say that, um, are great albums. I really liked them. Um, didn't have anything negative to say. Um, really just not something I ever really spun a whole lot. If I was in the mood for proggy style of music... Oh, excuse me, it's Monday morning, I'm fucking tired. Um, if I was ever in the mood for, like, proggy music, that generally wasn't the first thing that I would think about going to. Opeth was always more of that, like, death metal, um, style of music that I would pull in terms of their discography, so a lot of their, their older albums. They've been transitioning into a proggy style of band for a long time now, I mean, those elements were there, um... Probably starting off, even I would say, you know, Deliverance, Damnation, Ghost, Reveries, Watershed, like they've all were hinting very slowly and then obviously it just went full blown prog. Um, so now we're here with this album, which is a concept album. 
And before I get started to talk about the music, let me show you the record. I don't know what variant this is. Um, I got this at, on Amazon, to be 100% frank with you. And that was because I didn't want to spend the like $10 shipping on it. I'm such a cheapskate when it comes to shipping. I have Prime, so this was I got this like within a day. Uh, so here's the album cover. It's a gatefold. Now it's a concept album, so these pictures are, you know, falling in line with that concept album. And then the back, it's a double LP. It also comes with the poster of the album cover, which I, not too bad. I mean, I probably wouldn't hang this because on the front of the, oh wait, no, it's not the album cover. I'm wrong. It is concept of the album. It's like, oh, what is it again? It's like the book, basically about with this concept like and, and stuff like that it talks about every single song and has the lyrics on it but it's like written in the style of like a typewriter book and then it's got the credits and, and all that stuff like that um so yeah uh kind of a strange poster to be honest with you but uh you know whatever um and then this is just the plain gold copy so again i don't know what the limitation on this was um I'll show you the stickers. I like this sticker on the side. It makes it feel like a like a like a promo test test pressing with how that sticker is. And it's just a you know little little minimal thing that really doesn't matter. And it's a forty five RPM. I am one of those people that loves forty five RPM vinyls. Um, I know some people have some issues with it because it requires them to have more records that you're buying like usually it's a double lp or sometimes triple um and it requires you to get up and stand and flip the record uh, more however for me personally my own personal um opinion here is i think they sound better i think actually that might just be a general consensus here and i just always really enjoy when they're 45 rpm obviously a lot of like grindcore and stuff like that are 45 rpm because of how much they put into the album there's like 100 songs and stuff like that um but yeah i i mean i was happy to see it was 45 rpm i'm very much a 45 rpm nerd a lot of my like very expensive audiophile pressings um from acoustic uh from analog productions um are are 45 rpm so big fan of those. Anyway, so that's the vinyl. I'm going to put it down now um, and talk about the music. So like I said, this is a concept album um, and I didn't know that. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really pay much attention to this release coming up because again, I, I kind of wrote it off as this is going to be a very much a similar style of, of album that they've put out over the last several years. Um, but it is a concept album. It's set in post-World War One era it's a story of a wealthy conservative patriarch um whose wife is infertile and it's the last will and testament reveals shocking family secrets so that's basically you know the overall concept of it uh and it goes talks about like you know the kids that he has and there's a polio ridden girl that they raised and uh there's you know twins that they had due to procreation by uh, due to the result of donor procreation stuff like that um so this is the last concept album that they've put out since uh stillborn which was um 1999 still life not stillborn <laughs> i was thinking of malevolent creation just now still life uh 1999 yeah that's the that was the last um concept album that they had out uh and immediately listening to this i was like okay yeah so we still have you know Prago path here uh it still very much sounds like you know what the band has been for the last several years but there's something that they did here that for me personally made me feel like this is quite possibly their best album that they've written in quite a long time probably up to ghost reveries if not maybe better than ghost reveries if i were to be honest with you like this is definitely going to be like one of my favorite opeth albums and that is because it is just musically phenomenal. Um, as a prog nerd, I absolutely love all the different instrumentations that get added into to the music. I, I love that 
they add like strings and horns and, and all those types of instrumentations into there and the time signatures fluctuate and we have ebbs and flows of just dramatic music to softer style of music to heavier style of music when it comes to progressive death like i those are the things that i absolutely love about prog music and, and i openly like have come at them with open arms I, I absolutely love it and i think for me personally on this it was such a since it's a concept album it's such a theatrical album for that reason it very much tells a story and you know that from the very beginning because there's spoken word on here and, and it goes into you know just reading the lyrics and stuff like that so it's an album that is captivating and it and it makes me feel like really immersed into it it's not some it's honestly to tell you the truth i don't think i would ever listen to a song out of order for that reason um they all go together um and you obviously you can it's, there's nothing saying you can't but this is an album that needs to be like fully digested as that as a story um and then from there then dissecting the, the each you know musicianship of it the, my absolute most favorite thing about this album is that ian uh, ian anderson from jethro toll is on this like he's a phenomenal musician he's a phenomenal solo artist outside jethro toll he's an amazing uh flutist or flautist flautist i think is what you say um and that's on here he's on a couple of songs i'm trying to I'm gonna pull, let me pull up the song credits because i can't remember i think it's like two or three uh, I think he was on paragraph four, which is the fourth song. And then he was also on paragraph seven. Um, and then the final track, A Story Never Told, which is my absolute favorite song on this album. Uh, it's just so good. It's definitely one of the more progier songs on here. Definitely the least death metal style of song. And that's the other thing I'll get to in a minute. But Ian Anderson's adding to this was incredible. And I was reading an, an interview from Michael Eckerfeld that, you know, he's been a huge fan of his. He's a huge inspiration of his. Uh, and he tried to get him on a past album. It just didn't work out. And now he's here and it just seems like surreal. I think that's pretty cool. Um, again, he's a legend uh, musician. Just simply incredible. He also speaks on the album on the first song, the second song, the fourth song, and the seventh song. So he's the storyteller of this album. Um, he, I believe he is the, like the main person behind it. Like that's his voice and that's like, he just came in as like the main character <laughs> or something like that. Um, so very cool, but there's also a bunch of other things added to this. I mean, we've got, uh, I believe there's a new drummer. Um, I can't say your name, but he's incredible. Oh my God. The drums on here are so good. Just, uh, they're so good. Um, and and I can I wish I could pronounce this, his last name, but I'm sorry. I I or his name just in general, but I'm gonna butcher it. Um, so but you can go ahead and look in the credits and you'll you'll know. Um, Walteri, I don't know. Um, he's incredible on this, but there's also you know so many other things about this album that I absolutely love that I've heard while listening to this. Um, so much percussion so much strings uh like i guess michael did the string arrangements for it um which is incredible god he's such a he's such an amazing artist man just his his creativity and just his just the way he plays and the way he sings his voice is still incredible after all these years um and just you know the bass is oh, the bass is so jazzy and so phenomenal on this um and then the guitar the guitar soloing oh so good um and then you know you have the pianos and the organs and there's the moogs and there's so much other instrumentation there's so much percussion and there's backing vocals and just there's a lot on this album it is very heavy prog it yes the growls are back and there are those death metal style of elements in there that are reminiscent to their earlier albums that people are like freaking out about and they absolutely love but that's not even my favorite part about this album my favorite part about the album is just the whole entire story it's telling concept of it all the instrumentation just how amazing each song is and just how the instrumentation the musicianship the the creativeness and just the writing like again the vocals are just incredible from the growls to the clean singing like you would never know this band has been around for over 30 years you would never know that michael's voice is that old like because he just sounds simply phenomenal everything about it the production is great there's just so many things about this album that I hear every time I listen to it 
Um, and I've listened to it a ton. Uh, this is generally the album that I've been putting on in the morning this last like week since I've had it. Because uh, it's just such a, it, it, it's it got a, you know, a darker tone to it. It's very much an Opeth darker tone style of album. Um, and it takes me back to some of those earlier albums for that reason. Um, but at the same time, it just, it, it's a mood booster in my opinion. Because it's just such a, such a great album. Um, I fucking did not expect to fall in love with this album as fast as I did. I, again, I kind of wrote it off and thought it was going to just be, you know, the same old, same old Opeth that we've been getting for the last several years. I, shame on me for doing that. And that's not a bad thing. Like I said, I've always really enjoyed Opeth's other albums. I'm still a huge fan of them. Um, I just really, you know, I came into a time when they were death metal uh, and they were considered a death metal, progressive death metal band later on. And they very much were very heavy and just dark and growly and you know uh so but the trends like the transition into the prog was never an issue for me um i never jumped off the fandom after that it just again i just never really listened to them as much as i did the other albums so but this one um it's a masterpiece and the praise that i've been seeing around it is simply phenomenal too i will say that because there are a lot of people who I didn't think would actually enjoy this album that are very much the old school Opeth fans that only like those earlier albums and don't care for any of the newer stuff are coming in and saying how amazing this album is. And I that makes me happy um, because, again, there's a lot going on here. Like, this is not a straightforward death metal album, whatever. It's not even a straightforward progressive death metal album. Um, there's a lot of, like, this is very much a prog rock album. There's a lot of, you know, progressive rock elements into it. Um and in terms of like brutality and stuff like that, like it's not something that I would expect a, a huge, you know, 90s death metal fanatic to listen to and enjoy. And a lot of those people that I'm talking to are saying that. And I'm just in, like, that makes me super happy. Uh, this band for, will forever be just be one of the best bands ever in the metal scene, period. Um, just... That's just my my opinion, um, and I absolutely love this album. In fact, it's just completely really fucked up what I thought was going to be, like my year end list that I've had pretty much written in stone for about a month or so now. Because, again, I get promos and stuff, so I know what's coming out this month, and I and I've listened to things already and stuff like that. Uh, but this one, unfortunately, I kind of wrote off a little bit, and I wish I hadn't, um, because now I'm like, damn. I mean, it's here. I got it. I'm a huge fan. Uh, I really hope I can see them live again. They're one of the best con bands I've ever seen live. I saw them back in Pale Communion uh, time frame. So, in their, like, prog year era. But, again, not to say it's bad, but, you know. So, that's, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, I know, like, it's funny because there were quite a bit of people messaging me being like, did you hear this? Did you hear it yet? Did you hear it yet? And there are some people I'm saying like they don't understand the hype, and and that's fine. Like that's how it goes with everything. People hype up something, and there's always that crowd that's like, well, I don't understand. Well, you don't have to understand. Just don't listen to it. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. Nobody's telling you you have to love it. But I'm excited. Um, now I do wonder what they'll do next. When they'll do it next? If they're gonna take it, they might take a big hiatus between these albums, which I'm not too sure. I haven't gone and read all these interviews to see like if that's even been talked about. Um, but man, it, it is, it, it has a similar scope of like instrumentation of their last album, um, with like the very intricate compositions. Like I said, it's very much a prog album, but they almost made it a little bit more artful, a little bit more sophisticated. And again, they added the growls to it. So that made it different. The growls are good. They're not as, um, like super cavernous and dark and, and sinister like they were in past albums, but they're, they're very much deep growls that fit really well in they are not weird like he they managed to bring them back and not make it feel forced uh and that's that's something i should have mentioned previously and it just came up in my head now that's something i wanted to make sure i had said so phenomenal album um now the only thing that i do want to say is it is a bit of a listen um it it, it can it's a it's a bit long it's a 50 minute long album and the shortest track on here is five minutes and 33 seconds. Or no, sorry, five minutes and 10 seconds. Um, paragraph four is probably my other favorite song on here because that, you know, Ian Anderson's on it. And just oh, his flute is so good. That jazz flute, man. Oh, 
and I love jazz music too. So, um, so again, you know, some people might find that to be too long with all of the, the progginess and the instrumentation and just the overall changes within the songs and the tempo changes and all of the other stuff. But for me, I, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good runtime. Any longer it would have been a little bit too hard to digest. So I think they, they ended it at a good point. So that is all I have to say. This one's a little bit of a longer review. There's a lot more to digest with this album. Um, and again, you know, the history of Opeth, uh, there's a lot there to unpack if you're, if you've been a fan of theirs for a long time. Um, again, simply incredible album. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I've only had it for like a little over a week now. I'm trying not to sit here and be like, this is going to be my album of the year because I'm so on a high with it right now. Um, and that's what always happens with me is like, I get on a high. I'm like, album of the year. I've done that like three times this year. Um, so I'm going to, you know, I don't do my album of the year stuff until like the very end of December. So don't expect that to see that anytime soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, but like I said, I've been getting promos for what's coming out in December and I know, and like, I feel good about making the year end list and anything that I miss from this year, I always talk about coming up like after January. Um, but this is, you know, gonna eat, obviously be on it, to be honest with you. So, all right, that's all I have. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, hope you're having a great Monday and I will see you in the next one.